How you doing everybody? Uh, Randy Richard of Randy Richard in the shop. Uh, Happy New Year. This is my first video of the new year. Uh, I know I've been away and I apologize for that, but I came down with some uh, the illnesses that have been going around and I've been really, I've been sick since October and I finally got over that phase of things or about the first week of December and then the grandkids came back again for Christmas and their grandkids are evil, they're carriers. And uh, well, so I, I, I came down with another, uh, I don't know, a flu type uh, deal going around and I'm just kind of get I'm just getting over it. Uh, so it's, it's, uh, it's, it's tough. Uh, you get a cough and it's just, uh, I don't want to be out in the shop it's kind of cool and the weather's uh, actually been fantastic here in California uh, compared to the rest of the country but uh, it, I just had to get over it uh, so I, I worked on some drawings for things and, and projects for the new year and uh, picked up a couple things on eBay I, I want to thank everyone who's was uh, supportive of buying dovetail cutters and scribes uh, clean me out of everything. I end up having to make dovetail cutters and uh, I usually make them to order anyway, but I end up having to make quite a few. So I changed a little bit of how I make them uh, on the mill using a, a 5C, uh, call, it, call it a closer indexer uh, uh, jig and uh, that saved me several minutes in time and so that that was a big help So I'm making a fixture plate to hold it on the mill and to, So I can just set it on the mill and it's ready to go all at the angle. I don't have to dial it in or anything uh, So uh, actually uh, in this video is going to be some of that making of that fixture plate uh, a few other projects for the year I have uh, I picked up on eBay uh, this is not together, but nice little jig here for uh, for grinding, uh, precision grinding between centers. Uh, I've had it for, actually I've had it for a little while, but it's a 10 inch sign plate also, up and down. Now these aren't, I don't have these attached right now. Uh, three inches here in height. It's, uh, you know, made by a machinist. Uh, somewhere there's no initials on it, but it's uh, definitely a shop made it, but it's very well made. It's all hardened uh, uh, Sewing machine motor mounts on here now the, the mount was kind of rickety So I'm gonna build a new mount for it and I'm do a couple little changes in on here There's a pulley that goes here. I had to replace the bearing with and but we're gonna do a few few uh, mods to it and make it better uh, We're gonna change how the center is um, We'll build a new one for that Oops. Uh, anyway, uh, you'll see more of this in a coming video. Now, hopefully, that focusing better there if I hold it steady. I'll show you. I'll show you a little closer up. Uh, but it's very well made, very nicely, all hardened. And uh, also, I picked up a uh, 3D printer, small one, uh, a TiVo Tarantula, uh, a Banggood. Kept sending me emails, sending me emails, and I wasn't really going to uh, participate and do anything with Banggood, but uh, I said, well, heck, send me a 3D printer. <laughs> uh, so uh, that took my son-in-law and I three days to put together. It came as a kit, uh, lots of parts, and uh, I've been playing with that, and I'll, I'll do a full video on it. And uh, I do have it up and running, you know. But I tell you, they're finicky machines, uh, I must say. Anyway, uh, we'll do a video, video on that. <laughs> uh, uh, also, the closing lathe. Uh, I haven't done anything since the last video that you saw. Uh, so uh, I was doing a lot of finalizing on the plan. I don't. I don't want to screw this part of it up. Uh, it's uh, major repair-wise, so uh, I, 
I really have been thinking through of how I'm going to do this. I'm really not 100% with my thoughts yet, but uh, I'm getting there very close. Uh, so I'm going to start on that real soon. Uh, and we'll get this thing up and running. Uh, at least that we're going to cross our fingers on. Uh, but I, I, again, I, I just I want to thank everybody for helping uh, helping out here in the shop uh, with buying scribes and dovetail cutters. Uh, email me. Uh, I'll I have some uh, dovetail cutters actually in stock now. I made up an, uh, quite a few. Uh, I have I have really I have two scribes left. I found enough. Uh, parts that I had not put together so I put together a couple uh, brass scribes and I could probably do a couple stainless ones uh, but I'll be making a whole new batch here in the next uh, couple months uh, with some hex ones some brass hex ones this time and uh, stuff so I will be doing that uh, but if you want a dovetail cutter just email me and we'll, we'll get one going there um, but thank you again, everybody who helped out uh, over the Christmas season. Uh, I was laid off from my job, permanent layoff type thing, uh, back in the first week of November. So uh, I'll have a lot more shop time, I guess, <laughs> uh, the way it goes. So that, uh, you know, buying the scribes and dovetail got really help, really helps out here in the shop. Like I said, I was able to buy a few things on eBay, and uh, this uh, this uh, grinding. Uh, Rig here is uh, uh, will uh, come in quite handy. I have a few projects I want to I want to do with that. Uh, other than that, uh, let's go uh, build that fixture plate, and uh, we'll uh, be seeing you in the next one. Thanks. Hey Steve, it's hard to see, but I engraved your logo on one side of the hammer. Uh, I don't know, you can see, make out the shark, huh? And on this side, I put my logo. Kind of hard to see. Anyway, if you want the uh, file, no problem. It's a G code file. I'll send it to you. Thank you, Steve, again for the hammer. Very nice. Well, I got my printer uh, here today uh, from Banggood. 3D printer. And this is how it came. So the tape is sticking out the back end here, and there, there's cardboard there. So I think they intentionally printed it or packaged it possibly this way. We're going to find out when we open it. just finished my first 3d print of something that I designed this is a um, soap mold kind of thing for bath fizzies <laughs> how about that uh, something for my wife uh, and my daughter so it took four and a half hours to print both of these uh, they're gonna hinge together and uh, Make a little, make a about a golf size, a little bit bigger than a golf ball size ball. Uh, pour the stuff in, squeeze it together. I'm just gonna get them off of here. They come off pretty easy. Uh, the blue tape thing, uh, I must say, works really well uh, to do this. Yeah, it just came right off. Very nice finish. 
I had a 0.2 millimeter for the layer height and uh, count pretty doggone good. Little hole right there, just kind of holidayed there on me, but this is a structure, support structure. I probably didn't really need to do that. The way the the ball formed, it it, it really didn't need to do that. Uh, the bottoms come out really nice. There's a little support structure right in here uh, to support that. What I should have done is probably printed this the other way, uh, flip that over, but it came out came out okay. And I think a little too warm. Uh, I changed the temperature right in this zone here. This is a uh, didn't show a collapse, but a little deformation. The rest came out good. I, uh, I, I, I tuned the temperature while it was printing, and I think that uh, worked out pretty well. Uh, maybe a little too warm. Uh, it's got to be pretty warm on the bed to adhere when you do that first layer. And uh, But I think I had a little collapse. So, But not too bad. Uh, other than that, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, Pretty happy. Anyway, I'll break this stuff out, clean this uh, structure out, and uh, we'll see how they go together. All right, I broke these out, just grabbed my fingers, and they came right out. And then I did a little knife cleanup on the inside here. But these uh, inside here came out very nice. Very nice. A little had a little blob right there for some reason, but cleaned right up. This side came out even better. Uh, the ends are a little sketchier, but not too bad. But the rest of it came out really nice. A little bit of cleanup, and uh, I did run a drill through, but I didn't. I probably really didn't need to, but it came out came out just nice. That's that was my idea on the hinge. I slipped the pin in. Boom. A little close up mold, and it comes and it comes apart. You know, real. Um, I should say easily. Oops, pulled the right way, and it comes apart easily. Uh, pretty simple. Pretty simple. They're gonna pour their stuff in there, both sides, and I put a little relief groove in it to relieve the squeeze out. And they're just gonna pour them in there, push it together, run under some cool water, let it cool a little bit, and uh, pop it open and pop their ball out. That's the plan at least. <laughs> anyway, it <laughs> came out came out way better than I thought. <laughs> and and the, and the hinge thing worked out and everything. <laughs> uh I'm pretty impressed. Pretty impressed. So uh I I uh the hole I, I made it leave uh was five millimeters but it came out about four and a half millimeters so that that came out actually better for my hinge pin a little bit of a close-up of uh, this grinding uh, fixture uh, this is the this, it's sewing machine motor and I'll probably pick up a small uh, speed control for it, and and uh, so we have a little bit better speed. Uh, so there's no speed con speed on it, control with it now. I'm going to build a new mount for it. There's some uh, mounting holes right here uh, on the headstock, and we'll, we're going to come up with a, a new mount for it so it's a little firmer and uh, positioned a little bit better. There's a pulley that goes on here with a bearing that slips on here uh, to drive it with a dog. Uh, these centers, uh, uh, the, these fit really qu uh, quite loose. They're kind of sloppy. I, I think I can do better on that uh, and better fit. But this center, I want to make it not just a 60 degree point here, but I want to have a center drilled point on this end. Uh, so you can put a so you can grind something with a point on it, you know, like a live, like fix up your live center on your leg and things like that, that you can put in here and put a point in. So we'll have a dual ended one, kind of like the Herrig, uh, Stan, if you've seen Stan, he bought a Herrig, a brand new one, I think, uh, the way it looked. And uh, this was 
quite a, quite a bit less. <laughs> I think the new Harrigan a new Harrigan is around twenty six hundred dollars, uh, and uh, they're pretty pricey. And of course, they're very nice and all that. Uh, I picked this up for about three fifty uh, on eBay. Anyway, so we're gonna fix that up with a new probably a new center and uh, a little bit uh, better setup on this end, a little and better fitting. Uh, there's uh, uh, about two or three thousandths of play there, and I think I can get that a lot, a lot better. And on this end here, this is a, I'll just take this out. This is spring load, and I got a, a screw with a hex head. We'll make a new one for this and and uh, make it so it has a nice knob to pull on. And that's a, this, this is uh, fixed in here in your headstock, and then you. You ha you can pull you pull that back against the spring, right here. You pull that back to release your part, uh, like the Herricks have that same feature. And we're going to fix this up a little bit too. Uh, and I and I'm going to make I'll probably make a whole new one here. Actually, I'm probably going to rebuild almost all of it except for this little plate, it, so it fits better in the headstock. The, that this, this is kind of a sloppy, but when you tighten it down, it's solid. But I'd rather have it a little, a little more solid, you might say, a little bit better fixturing. So that, that that's nice there. Uh, these uh, adjust uh, with a key. That's uh, what they register on is the key uh, in the center here, uh, and and so you can slide this up and down or the headstock. Either one, you can slide up and down the table here. There's a small. Uh, little uh, t-slots here uh, for 1032 screw to go down and affixed to the table the the other nice feature about this is this is also a 10 inch a sign uh, between the center between centers uh, so you can adjust and do angles easily uh, then uh, this feature here which is is which is a I've never seen before uh, anything like this. This is a, like a wedge, and you can adjust that. So, for if you're out of square, or minor adjustments on an angle, if you have a set of gauge blocks sitting there, and uh, you uh, can adjust that in and out uh, to get any taper you might have uh, in in your grinding as you. If you have a little bit of grind, you can adjust that a tiny bit and get your taper that you might have out, up and down. But it's a pretty, pretty nice little rig there. Uh, it's all, all been ground. And then they got some uh, uh, holes here. I, I don't know what they're for, but they're tapped uh, 1032 to uh, either secure to a table or and such. Um, but they've all been uh, all been hardened and ground, uh, very nicely made. So uh, that's going to be a that'll be a nice a nice deal. So there it is. I I made it just a little bit bigger than the golf ball, forty five millimeters, and it came out within a half a millimeter. And there's a golf ball. Worked out just right. I picked up uh, some white lead actually on eBay. This is a new old stock can. It, the can is in great shape. I have no idea how old it is when they, or when they stopped using it or making it. Oops. And uh, it's full. It's, uh, it weighs a pound. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to make some uh, the center lube, or uh, the dead center lube, uh, like uh, Stan did. And uh, we're going to open this can up and see what condition this is in. Uh, wouldn't surprise me if it's dried out. And uh, the contents are uh, basic carbonate white lead and pure linseed oil and that's a 90 percent white lead and 10 percent pure linseed oil so that's all that's in there and uh, we'll just uh, probably have to grind it up and, uh, i imagine and uh, we'll uh, add a uh, re-dissolve it with uh, linseed oil 
uh, do like Stan did. And so uh, I'm going to mix it like, you know, like Robin uh, Renzetti uses here, anti-scoring extreme pressure lube number three by CMD. Picked up some of that. And uh, we'll, go, we'll go through the process here. Also, you'll see my 3D printed logo. I got it. Uh, my other ones, the lettering was backwards, or mirror image, I should say. And I, as I, I modeled it in Fusion 360 and I used the Z axis positive on everything, well, it was mirror imaging it. I don't know why it does it. I haven't figured it out, but what I did is I did a negative Z on the letters. So I came through the other side of the model, obviously. Uh, and when I printed it, you know, it, on the computer, the model looks like the letters of mirror image. But when you print it, it comes out right. Why is it flipping it? Why is the software flipping it? Uh, or what? But I, I, I don't know. Uh, it actually came out pretty darn good. I don't like this uh, PLA. This stuff here, this is a, a very hard to get the settings uh, to uh, write to to get a decent print. It's um, I don't like this stuff. This came with the printer, and uh, I have some new stuff here by AIO, and I'll be I'm working trying that actually just print finish printing something with some of that stuff and working on the settings uh, to get a good nice print uh, from that stuff. Uh, 3D printing takes a lot of time. Especially to get things right. Anyway, that's what that's for. That's for just throwing down in the video uh, the, the logos there and stuff. So anyway, back to the, the white lead. Let's open it up and see what the condition is. I couldn't believe I found a can of this uh, with with something in it. Now, there's a lot of cans without anything in it on eBay. But uh, I got lucky and found a can that was supposedly full. And fairly hard <laughs> it looks like it was sitting maybe on its side somewhat because the way that hardened out it's, oh you know it it's crusty hard but down you know it's, it it breaks up so we'll be able to break we'll go dig some of that out we'll uh and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get it pulverized and add some uh, linseed oil sweet deal I think, uh, like uh, Stan says, a uh, whole can, 10 of this here will go a long ways. Uh, and I got this for, this cost me 25 bucks. Uh, like I said, you'll find a bunch of cans of it. They're empty cans, though, uh, on eBay. Um, but uh, I, 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 I did score a full one, so.
quick shot of the layout. We're going to cut a 30 degree angle groove in here. Uh, then we'll reset and we'll be drilling some holes, four holes to mount on the table. All right, we're all set up here. We indicated off this this side here. That's the going to be the back edge. So we have a we set it up at 60 degrees, uh, which will be a 30 degree angle uh, when we're done. So <laughs> uh, anyway. We're going to cut that groove right here to, and it's going to fit this key. This key is 472. So that's going to be our groove width. So we just, we're going to use a parallel. Now this parallel will not fit down in there, but I can get a pretty good contact area down here at the end at an angle. And, uh, and snug it up. Measure that with a mic and... Uh, She's 373, maybe a smidge under. That's okay. That's we're looking for 374. I mean, 472. I'm sorry. We're looking for 472. So about a hundred thousands would be just right. So we're going to go over uh, calculations. It says 97 thousands. We're going to go over 95 and remeasure it. I'm just using WD-40 here uh, in the bottle. Or four fifty six and a couple tenths. I flushed up the back with a parallel, I uh, just held against the back here, so this plate is perfectly flush with the back of the table. Then I used the edge finder and Edge found this edge for my distance in uh, for the holes, and then I edge found the uh, the slot each side and centered up on the the slot, so my hole will be centered uh, for the slot. We'll come over and we'll spot drill those. Then we'll come over here and I'll edge find this slot and we'll do those two holes also. We'll spot them all. I'll save the spots the locations in the DRO. And then I can come back and uh, drill the holes.
All right, we got our plate finished up. I had to blow out the chips, I guess. <laughs> and uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna mount the uh, indexer on there. Now we'll go over and uh, put it on the mill and we'll do some measurements to see how accurate we got it. All right, I have four uh, T-nuts already slipped in the table. Now a fence goes up tight against the back of the table and we need to go down. Very, very, very solid. So here's my uh, setup. I threw it on there, pulled it up tight against the back, and then snugged it down. I have a three-quarter inch. Here, we'll take this out. I have an th old three-quarter inch end mill, carbide end mill in here. And those marks, uh, I'll zoom you in here. I have a couple marks here, an inch and a quarter apart, just so I kind of go in the same place. I don't have to, uh, but I have my DRO set up for the angle, which is a minus 60 degrees uh, as far as a DRO is concerned. And we're going to, uh, I already uh, set the height of my indicator, but we'll zoom in here and do a check. Well, we'll start over here. Doesn't really matter. So I'm gonna bring it in, and we'll at zero. I'm gonna go up and down a little bit to make sure we're on hot the uh, crest, and it's right there. Yep. We'll come back. And uh, we're uh, right on the money. We'll reset, reset the DRO. Now we're going to come down here about an inch and a quarter. Um, the R DRO doesn't care how far you go, uh, but the longer you do it, the more accurate a reading you get, the more distance you use. And we'll come back in and see how we can do. Bring it up on zero. And the DRS says I'm eight tenths out. For all intent and purposes, for what this is, uh, that'll be just fine. 
uh, eight tenths is not bad. Do the do the check a couple times, and you know now it says it's uh, six tenths. So. Zero that again, and we'll come and do it again. So that's uh, eight tenths again. Uh, what we could do is we could always uh, try rotating it, which it, it probably, oh here, you just rotating it shows you quite a bit. About four thousandths. Now we'll always we'll try turning our dr turn our end mill a little bit. But when I when I do the dovetail cutters, uh, I leave it indexed in one position. I don't rotate it or anything. So. Pass the, the mark I touch a few, few tenths. Uh. Man, I can't get it there, huh? There we go, and DRO says zero. So kind of all uh, maybe matters a little bit about uh, rotating this, but I can always uh, put my end mill in and do, I'll do a check and then I'll always leave it in that index position. So I think this is a, a great, su great success. So I think this is a great success and this setup is going to work out just nice. Uh, now I use a collet stop on the collet of course and that so I always put them in the same depth and always have enough clearance out here for the end mill and it gives me maximum support. Uh, what else do I do? That's about it. <laughs> uh, the, end, the end mills uh, the dovetail cutters, I should say, will, can vary in length a little bit because we're I'm making them by hand, and and uh, it it sometimes they're they're probably usually uh, within fifty thousandths of one another. If actually they're I've measured them and I've been within uh, twenty or thirty thousandths usually, but I mean they could be fifty thousandths. It's it's it the length of the shank is, is incidental. Uh, and I measure every one when I make it uh, out here on the end. It's 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 all individual. Uh, it's if they were all exactly the same, I could use numbers on the DRO to really help a lot. And and but it it's not worth the effort uh, to try to make them exactly the same length. Now, if there was C, if I was making them on a CNC machine, they'd all be the same. Anyway, so I think this setup's going to work out really nice for me. Uh, a lot quicker and I can just set it on here, bolt it down, check it, we're good to go. Uh, instead I have to dial in the vise every single time. So fixturing is uh, 
Uh, if you got a bunch of stuff to do or you go, you're going to be back and forth doing it all the time, it's worth the time to make a fixture. So uh, thanks you guys and thanks for watching.